G'day community, how we doing? Um, just getting ready for another installment with Jules. Um, today we're going to be talking about, and I believe I know who this question came from, um, because it was relating to rock climbing. I'm not going to reveal who it was, but I think the chances are she will probably be listening to this. Um, but the question was, you know, what are the best foods for, for during exercise? Um, and the particular context, oh, well, we'll go through that later, but also, you know, how much should we be eating on rest days? Two very specific questions that uh, a lot of people will be struggling with. G'day Mel, how are you going? Haven't seen you in a while actually, um, probably because I haven't been in the clinic too much, but um, it was good to see everyone in there the other day when I came in and uh, ran a couple classes, saw a few of you, which was awesome. Glad to see um, everyone's going good and I uh, spoke to a couple of people in Melbourne who are battling quite heavily in this time. So um, for those of you who are in Melbourne at the moment, um, my heart goes out to all you guys, but um, yeah, it's great to, to be able to kind of get out there and, and be active at the moment. Um, some pretty cool updates last week as well. So um, yeah, really exciting things going along at MTP and um, that new clinic is looking awesome and Dave has been out there. Um, oh, sorry, we had Jules. Here she is now, just sending her in. stuff so hope you guys have enjoyed this so far um, over the last few weeks and um, looking forward to hear what Jules has to say today. There we go connecting yeah. how are you going apologies for my monologue there <laughs> that's all right can you see me and me okay yeah perfect um you at home today I am, and I am outside because the internet connection is not great. So I apologize for the background traffic. No, look, no worries. No worries at all. Um, I guess, um, have you been? Everything good down there? Is it a little bit cold at the moment still? It's warming up. It's warming up. No, it's supposed to be 28 on Thursday, I think. So, well, at least here, at least. Oh, uh, no, I'm still happy with 18 here. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Oh, well, fair enough then. I guess um, we don't want to kind of beat around the bush too much. I guess um, going on to the question that we we had asked, um, firstly, I think it was actually two questions. Um, what If someone was to yep. ask you what the best foods or during exercise were, um, and I guess I'll separate it into two parts because I believe the, the initial question was asked more like if you're out on a long day of exercising, what are the best foods to consume during that? Um, but I guess, yep. would you ever recommend someone eat during the actual act of exercising as well? If it's just one bout of exercise? Yep. So, okay. So, what to eat during exercise, but also if it's a long day of exercising? Yes, yes. Okay, the, that's a very general question. Um, and I, I think I've heard that you were mentioning about someone who was rock climber, yeah? Yeah, yeah, specifically um, uh, rock climbing. Yeah, okay. So, so if you think about being outdoors um, and, you know, it might be something that you spend yep, hours outdoors, it's not so much about, so we can, we can kind of break that what to eat during exercising two, two ways. One is thinking about, okay, I'm going to be out and I need to carry my food with me. What do I take? Yep. Um, and say with rock climbing, I used to do adventure racing when I was at uni. So those were things that yep, I had to pack and carry stuff with me. Um, the main things to consider are you still want a type of protein. You want to make sure that there is enough variety there with taste and with texture. Um, a lot of the times like if we just go, oh yeah, I just need carbs. I'll just get, um, you know, my gels. By the third gel, I can't like, ah, stomach this anymore. There's no, you know, nothing to to uh, chew on and it's all the same flavor. So making sure that there is 
savory things, there's sweet things, there's smoothie things, there's crunchy things, um, and there's water. With with rock climbing, it would be more almost making up a meal as you're outdoors. Um, so thinking about pieces of cheese, I find that something that um, the hard cheeses, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily need the fridge. Like if you look at like Parmesan cheese, it's something that just lives, lives in the cupboard kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. So that's something that you can take um, little, uh, little packs with cubes of, of hard cheeses, um, salted nuts again to get that sodium happening as well. Um, jerky can be quite useful. Ideally, if you make it yourself or you get a good quality one, so you know that the, the quality of the meat's good and the, you know, the ingredients that were added to that. But, but the idea of like dried meat is, is a nice one. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be red meat. It can be chicken as well. Um, some people might have dehydrators or um, even a, a very low temperature in the oven can give similar results. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, fruit, fruit's nice. Depending on how compact it is, dried fruit might be better. So thinking about, um, you know, getting those nutrients, but in a, in a way that you also, it's easy to carry and with, and the least amount of packaging as you can. You don't want to be like tins of tuna are nice, but they can be very messy. And mm. then you also have to make sure that you carry that back yeah. home. Um, and how are you going to carry that once you already have um, opened it and you don't want fish getting in the way of your equipment and things like that. So, kind of with, um, yeah. With rock climbing and outdoor stuff that it's not too intense, but it's long. Those would be my suggestions. Um, and then another one, like if you're thinking about say, okay, what if I am running this whole time? Or what if I'm doing a, a long, um, more intense activity? And it doesn't, then it doesn't have to be like the whole day. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that's going to take over an hour, you can start thinking about fueling during, um, you know, eating during your training. Um, and that's, and then it depends again, it depends how long that's going to go for. If you can get away with just carbohydrates, um, if it's just a few hours, two hours or so, if it starts to get longer than three hours, then you, you really need to start looking at adding protein as well, replenishing the sodium. Um, and it kind of starts to become more complicated and hard to make a general um, approach there. Interesting. Okay. Like, and I um, guess, oh, sorry. Were you going to say add something else? No, go for it. I was just going to say, like, uh, I think um, a lot of people tend to fall into that idea of the sports sports drinks and needing to replenish electrolytes. But um, how, what would be your stance on that kind of thing? Um, the first thing to remember is that you don't want to use the the meal that you have either just before um training or during training it's not re taking the space of proper recovery and proper planning for that specific um activity it, it you know you need to taper you need to prepare in advance so you should start that session ready to go mm -hmm. um and then adding things um as you go to maintain your performance throughout that gels and, and Gatorade, uh, they, they can be helpful, useful things, practical, 
Um, but there are other options as well in terms of different foods because, again, they don't provide a lot of variety. They're usually sweet and smooth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to be able to, to have other things. Runners, um, this can happen in any sport, but runners tend to be the ones that suffer, suffer the most um, with gut issues. Yep. And so then it becomes even more important to pay attention to the types of sugars that you have on those gels um, so that you're not making your life even harder in that process. What, what do you think usually contributes to that for runners? Um, it's a combination. So it's a combination of um, the physical kind of the movement. So the, um, you know, the, yeah, the, just the movement of running mm -hmm. with gravity. Yep. Um, and because of that, it also then starts to cause micro tears in the gut, which irritates the gut. Um, and, and also in, in running, you, you do have that very strong message of, you know, fuel with carbohydrates and have this and have that and you might have too much. So it's yep. a combination of the activity itself that makes the gut a bit unhappy mm -hmm. with the types of food that you're going to add. So cycling, for example, you might not get as much because the movement that you're doing is a bit different. Okay, interesting. Um, also, I Luke's asked a question, so I'll just address that and then we'll wrap up. But the one other thing I was going to ask is, what is your ideal amount of time before exercise to have a more robust meal, like an ideal meal? So, thinking about the meal before exercise, one of the main um, focuses there is comfort. Is mm -hmm. how um, how's that meal going to sit in your stomach? Yep. How long is it going to take to digest? And, and how long do you, do you have as well for a meal? Because uh, we can say, well, in three hours, most meals are digested enough in your gut that you can exercise with no issues. Mm -hmm. But if you're starting your, your competition at seven in the morning, then you have to have that meal at four yeah and it kind of starts to become impractical mm -hmm. so it's thinking all right if you're starting really early and you only have an hour what can you have and it's mostly things that are um, easy to digest liquids um low fiber low fat mm -hmm. um and again is practicing, never trying anything new in a competition setting. Yeah. It's always practicing that in training and going, you know what? I can eat a high fiber breakfast half an hour before my game and I feel fine. Then great, do that. Um, but if you have a bit more trouble, then make sure you practice and, and figure out what works for you. Okay. Interesting. I, I think that's very valuable. Um, I know in my experience of competitions, it, it can be a real trouble having too much food in your stomach for sure. Um, I guess yeah. the, and the, it's something that you can train. Oh, sorry. No, no, go on. Um, I was just going to move on, but what were you going to say? Sorry. I was just going to say it's something that you can train your gut. So mm -hmm. um, very commonly in rugby, for example, is that because it's so high impact, it, the chances that, you know, you really want your stomach to be empty is, is kind of attractive. But at the same time, if you don't eat, you're going to hit a wall much earlier. Yeah. So it's training your gut to be able to hold food, even if you're, yeah, you know, being upside down or doing very strenuous exercise. Interesting. I guess we might have to um, untouch on that another time because I think that'd be quite interesting for a lot of people. Um, the the last question that I want to quickly ask is Luke's asked, so when, um, specifically for people with osteoarthritis, 
Do you have any nutritional yep. tips for these people during longer duration activity to minimize inflammation? I know Luke's spoken about making sure we're hydrated, but are there any nutritional things that you really recommend for those people with those cohort? Yeah, I mean, there are general general themes that help with, with inflammation um, and that would be reducing vegetable oils, reducing added sugars um, and making sure that you're also adding vegetables and antioxidants um, and omega-3s to your diet. But I'd say that that would be that should be the base like that should be a daily thing mm -hmm. um, and then figuring out in particular then what of those options can they also apply during the exercise during training day or, or race day because it is um yeah it is a response that will increase with with exercise absolutely but it's it needs to be managed on a long-term basis rather than just on the day of the exercise. Yeah, super interesting. I think it's really, as you, as you say, right, it's about minimising that inflammation elsewhere and then chances are like that's going to carry over to the exercise because you'll be overall much less inflammation. So super interesting. I think that's something that a lot of people seldom remember is there's actually a lot of dietary things that contribute quite significantly to um, inflammation. So I think we, we got some pretty, pretty good insights there. Um, I think the person who might've asked the question just jumped in on uh, the live stream. So hopefully she got um, her answers. And um, yeah, look, thanks so much again for your time. Um, we've been sharing these on our YouTube and we'll start sharing them more. So um, yeah, no, it's, it's really great. Thanks so much for everything. Uh, for all the advice. Awesome. Cheers. Thanks, no Jules. No worries, Ben. Enjoy your week. Bye-bye. Speak soon.